everyone today we will see five more current affairs which will be easy for you to revise and recollect during this pandemic also i will be giving you another thirukural to find the meaning that is ulluvadellam uyar ullal matralladu thallinum thallamai neerthu the english version of the yesterday's thirukural is given here see to that let's go first to one is 22nd law commission that is law commission is neither a constitutional body nor a statutory body it is an executive body which is established through the government of india's order so it is originally constituted in 1955 it is reconstituted every 3 years tenure of the 21st law commission has come to an end on 31st august 2018 so the 22nd law commission has been commenced so far 277 reports have been submitted by 21 law commissions that is which has a tenure of 3 years upsc may confuse you with the words that is like statutory regulatory or executive so uh, keep an eye on this so members if you see the members there are there is a full time chairperson and four full time members will be there including the member secretary and secretary of the department of legal affairs he is an ex officio member of that law commission and another ex officio member of the law commission is legislative department secretary so are not more than five part time members okay that's all so next so what are the benefits of having law commission means they can modify or repeal the existing laws and they can make undergo that is undertake research in law and review the existing laws for making reforms on suo moto that is self motive or through the reference made by the central government and also they can enact new legislation and also they can undertake studies and research for bringing reforms in justice delivery system uh, for the elimination of delay in procedures because we need speedy disposal of cases and next reduction in cost of the litigation can also be made by law commission that's all zeno boards nowadays uh, uh, in science and technology upsc is asking about artificial intelligence internet of things uh, or robotic technology so keep an eye on these uh, terms okay so zeno boards Xenobots are millimeter wide robots and it is the world's first living machines that is which is made from the cells of african clawed frog okay so it is a living programmable organism of a new class of its artifact and it they can move around on their own they are tiny robots okay just it is made from the african clawed frog clawed frog the species name is xenopus lavis that's why zeno boats name has been given to this okay so keep a note of it and next if we see its application they can easily reach the target because they are very smaller in size and they can easily cure the issues okay so they can be used for finding out nasty compounds or radioactive contamination in a in a cluster gather if we see its application they can easily reach the target and cure the specific issue so they can be used for searching the nasty compounds or radioactive contamination they can gather the microplastic in the oceans because uh, my plastic pollution is a threat to marine ecosystem and also uh, single use plastics or uh, many and they can easily travel through the arteries to scrap out the plague in the human body see about a shadow banking system because of the crisis happened that is il and fs crisis happened in 2018 shadow banking has been has drawn the attention of our rbi so that's why we are seeing this now so it is a term coined by paul mccallay in 2007 it is the practice of of banking banking like activities not like the traditional uh, banks okay so performed by non banking finance companies special purpose entities and hedge funds they are not subjected to strict regulations as like the traditional bank lending they function as the intermediaries between the investors and the borrowers they are also known as non bank financial intermediation or market based finance and they provide credit generate liquidity in the system the shadow banking system is the major source of a major source of systemic risk to the banking system during the 2008 financial crisis so basel 3 norms require the central banks of all the countries who comes under basel 3 norms to tighten supervision on the shadow banks and also we know us is the biggest shadow banking system followed by the eurozone and we already know 2018 financial crisis caused by island fs so usha thorat committee 
refers to the draft regulations on a non -ba non banking financial company there was a recommendation that smaller non banking financial companies with asset size of less than 25 crore are likely to go out of the business so make a note of nbfcs also to one is dark web there are three types of web that is surface web deep web and dark web so dark web is nothing but it is also a wwb that is worldwide content only but they will overlay the networks that is they need a specific, specific software or configuration to or any authorization to access them so they are the collection of hidden sites and it is inaccessible in a regular browser so nor through search engines like google or uh, mozilla firefox we cannot so we need special browsers like tor browser that is uh, commonly called as the onion router okay because onion we know they have so many surfaces to peel off no so the store browser can encrypt the that is encrypt the information layer by layer and they will offer extreme privacy and protection from the surveillance of government regulatory bodies they will facilitate a underground marketplace for drug trafficking stolen identities child pornography and other illicit products and services which are illegal okay so it, will, it is a sophisticated browser for the for the criminals so the untraceable cryptocurrency is used as the primary means of payment to get this browser by the criminals so next one is colas the pitiable organism which cannot easily escape from the bushfires that is australian bushfires due to the increase in temperature okay so they are the marsupials that is pouched animals and not beer okay but commonly called as cola bear that is not the real term for them they are iconic animal native to australia and they have great cultural significance to aboriginal australians because they will be having stories based on them okay so they are found in four australian states such as queensland new south wales victoria south australia and also in coastal regions from adelaide to keynes area okay so next Usually these colas will sleep for 16 hours a day and they will consume almost uh, 500, 500 gram of leaves or more than that also per day and they will live for about 10 to 14 years only. Females will mature earlier at the age of 3, males will mature at the age of 4 only that is sexual maturity is attained okay and they will consume eucalyptus usually eucalyptus contains tannins which is indigestible so colas will choose a specific eucalyptus species only and it also helps in minimizing the competition with the other organisms that is other marsupials like greater glider and common ringtail possum and the nursing mothers they will be uh, excreting a special type of feces which contains specific microorganisms which is essential for digesting the eucalyptus leaves this will be given to the joey that is the juvenile uh, colas by the nursing mothers then they will get adapt to eating the eucalyptus leaves that's all and the next one is they are called as food specialist and next colas and climate change we know global warming that is increase in greenhouse gases is occurring so the increase in carbon dioxide gas reduces the nutritional quality because it results in malnutrition and starvation and droughts occurring due to the climate change and they are vulnerable to wild and domestic predators because almost 4000 colas are dying each year by the dogs and cars alone road traffic and death occurs due to that and sexually transmitted disease like chlamydia for them and habitat destruction for other projects their potential sites are kangaroo island in southern australia where they can recover high density so there they can see um, high population density in the early 20th century they were traded for their fur that was also one of the reason for the declining population their adaptability that is uh, their physical adaptability that is the form fur and the thick skin uh, can endure the cold conditions in southern australia they cannot cope up with the extreme heat like uh, more than 40 degrees celsius uh, that's why so they have very limited adaptability so the and also the bush fires their tree dwelling lifestyle make them vulnerable to bushfires because they can easily they cannot easily escape from the trees or woods so they have become potentially vulnerable nowadays and by 2050 their population may go extinct if colas are not conserved properly now so wwf iuc are taking steps to conserve them and they also indicate the climate change
We have to conserve them with a cautious step because the koalas can give birth to only one joey a year. That's why. So that's all today. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to app IAS channel. Till then stay positive, stay healthy. Be happy. Keep smiling. Nandri.